We just got the Keithley DMM 6500, which is recommended to me by my friend David. It has uh, one of the best performing benchtop multimeters in its class at around 1200 bucks. So let's bust it open and check it out. So here it is, and the 6500 model number is for six and a half digits of resolution, and that's with a one mega sample A to D converter. So it's not in the giga samples like a scope, but it's definitely super fast for a data acquisition type unit. It also has a modern communication with built in Ethernet and USB port in the back, and well as well as a slot for an optional switch matrix mux card but that is over six hundred dollars so we're going to be looking at rolling our own usb mux card which will be a topic for future videos so since we're all about automation let's hook it up to the ethernet and check out the api Well, we're back at the computer here, so let's check out a couple of the specs. Here's the data sheet. We got DC voltage in the nanovolts to kilovolts, and we got current in the picoamps to 10 amps. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Ah. Here's a picture that was on the top of it. So it says to get started, go to tech.com slash keithley dash kickstart. So that brings us over to here. It looks like a free trial of this software that makes it so you don't have to learn how to program. All you have to learn how to do is pay $9.99. I think we better check out some Python here. I've started off here by collecting a bunch of the data sheets. So the first one here, I'll put a link to all these in the description. This is the data visualizer flyer. All right. This next one is the data sheet. Sounds got a few pictures. This next one is the user's manual. And this one here is the reference manual, which you can tell this is the real deal. 1257 pages. And then this third one here, this is this um, application note that I found that has some code in the bottom of it. So we're going to start with that. If you come down here, page uh, 9, Appendix A, so it talks about this Python script. And what it does is it uh, loads this other script and it calls that script to send back the data and it does it over the ethernet which is what we we're looking for all right i copied the python script so here it is test.py and then the helper script functions.lua here so this script i reformatted it because when you copy from the pdf it's a little funky but it's got loads of comments which is nice for us so it says the first thing you need to do is figure out what your IP address is. And then here's the data file it's going to create. And here is the script it's going to load. So that's this file we've created up here. So let's go over and find our IP address. So back at the meter to find the IP address, we go to menu and communications and then LAN tab. So here it is right here. So mine's 192.168.0.68. Um, I did just try this and it was a little weird and it didn't work. So what I did was I hit LAN reset here. Yes. And that reset everything and then um, it changed the address. I guess I got a new one and uh, it worked after that. So we'll go back to the computer. So now I'll change this 
So 0, 68, save that, and we'll run this script. Oh, looks like we have an error. So we're trying to track down the error. So we're going to go to menu, event log. Well, there's all kinds of errors in here. This touch screen is kind of cool. You can scroll around here. So it's saying reading buffer, land configuration was reset, SCPI header separator error. Okay. So we can go to log settings here. So command is off. We want to change that on so we can see what the command is uh, that it failed on. And then we'll go ahead and clear the log. And now let's just go back and I'll just run the script again real quick and see what happens. All right, we got the error again. Undefined Skippy header details. Skippy command is not correct, okay. So it's not like in the Skippy. And if we go to the error log, we have, here we go. Undefined Skippy header, print okay, and print function loaded. So it looks like, it looks like it thinks that this whole script we're loading is Skippy, which it's not. Um, so I think we need to change that. So skimming this user's manual here on page 49, it looks like it's talking about different command sets. And we're using this TSP script. Uh, so I think the problem is it's set to Skippy and we need to change it to this TSP uh, command set. So let's try that. So let's get rid of all these logs here. We'll clear the logs. And then back at the menu screen, so it says to change the command set, you go to settings and then command set. So here it's on SCPI, we'll change it to TSP. Okay. Now it's got to restart itself. Back at the computer here, uh, we're ready to try it again. But I did notice a couple of things. They have some settings here. It says 60,000 samples a second capture 10 seconds. So that seems like kind of a lot for just testing it. So I'm going to say two seconds and I'm just going to say 1,000 samples a second. Maybe we can, we can do five seconds. I don't want too much data. So we'll save that and then run, start debugging. Well, it had this other error. So um, let's see. In the event log, it says TSP syntax error at light and one unexpected symbol near. And it's got a weird looking single quote. Yeah, so check this out. This load funks here has these funky single quotes around it from, uh, must have been from copying from the PDF. Sometimes that happens. So we'll replace those and we'll run it again. Awesome. Looks like it's working. Here is the directory and it made this data file, 19,000 rows. So now let's hook something up to it and try an actual waveform. Well, it looks like my function generator is broken, so we'll just have to assume it works for now. I guess that's a topic for the next video, unboxing the function generator, or we could build one. We just want to change this data file to a CSV. Open it. Select the data with Control-A and insert 
a line chart. And there it is. We recorded a bunch of noise. Anyway, I think we'll leave it here and uh, let me know if you've got any ideas for future projects with this multimeter. And I was thinking we could try it with the Skippy commands and maybe test some power supplies. Also, this file has a script at the bottom here logging amp hour or watt hour measurements. So we could do some battery capacity testing. Uh, put your ideas in the comments and I'll see you next time.